Celsius v Fahrenheit, a fight as old as, well, as long as the two scales have really been around. Nowadays, though, nobody really tends to question that Celsius is the superior scale. What with its easy to understand 0 to 100 range, not to mention the sleek, sexy design of the letter C. But you know, the last time I checked, Celsius wasn't the one with a book named after it. Although, in researching this video, I found out that apparently even that is up for debate. Seriously, looking at the Wikipedia article, I'll link it down below, it reads like an ongoing argument. So clearly, if that is any indication, Fahrenheit and Celsius are still very much at each other's throats. And while I am American, and therefore slightly biased, I do believe Fahrenheit is the superior scale, at least when it comes to use in daily life. But before I go any further, let's delve into the background of each of these temperature scales to better understand where they came from. We'll start things off with Fahrenheit, because again, bias. It was first proposed as a temperature scale back in 1724 by Prussian physicist Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. This bonkers scale where water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 makes absolutely no sense. Or does it? Okay, no, not entirely. Basically, how he determined the zero of his scale was by placing a thermometer in a brine solution that was equal parts salt and ice. Because this brine is a frigorific mixture, which really sounds more like a swear word you make up to be clever than a scientific term, but I digress. A frigorific mixture is one that achieves an equilibrium temperature independent of its components. So basically what it means is that the temperature will remain consistent so long as those components are present. And this was effectively how he established his baseline. Although just plain ice and water is also a frigorific mixture, so I don't know why he went with brine. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say it's because he was impatient and figured the ice and the brine would melt quicker. These are the kind of things we don't learn from biographies. And it's not like he wanted to or even had to be different. The Celsius scale wasn't actually developed until almost 20 years later in 1742. The developer? Well, it might have actually been two people really. Or maybe, well, three depending on how you look at it. Anyways, Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius developed it first in 1742, and although he is the person for whom it is named, his scale was actually the inverse of what we know today. That's right, he set the boiling point at 0 degrees and the freezing point at 100. Take that! Perfect scale my- As I was saying, since boiling point can vary based on atmospheric pressure, he wanted to use that as his baseline, calibrating it based on the pressure at sea level. Surprisingly though, a French scientist, Jean-Pierre Christian, independently a year later also developed the Celsius scale. Communication wasn't really great back then, but he set the scale for how we know it today. But then, one year after that, coinciding with the death of Andres, Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist and friend, flipped his scale as well to what we know it to be today for use in his greenhouses. Although at that time, even in Sweden, people weren't calling it degrees Celsius, because people thought it was a dumb name. <laughs> Because as was common for the time, people were actually unsure who developed it first. It wasn't until 1948 that it was changed from what it was originally, degrees centigrade, to Celsius. And while the scale is now widely used outside of the US, Fahrenheit did have its role when it came to things like climate, industrial use, and medical purposes. Which is where my argument begins. I don't have an issue with any other metric unit. The UK is more than welcome to wage their own war of English aggression if they want to force us to change, but I will die on Hill Fahrenheit. For one, I think since it's more precise, it's better for measuring the temperature outside as well as our bodies. A degree or two higher in Fahrenheit is the difference between my school desk and bed, whereas a few degrees in Celsius could land me in the hospital. And as far as temperature goes, logically it makes sense to me to have it on the Fahrenheit scale as well. Since, on Earth at least, temperatures tend to range between 0 and 100. I know anything near those extremes is either really hot or really cold. And I know there will be people out there who will contend that it's just my point of reference and for them 30 degrees and up is very hot and anything below zero is very cold. Fine, but I'd argue that there are plenty of examples that make Fahrenheit a logical scale in this regard. From a young age, we're taught that 100% on an exam is good. We 100% video games. Hell, just the idea of 100%, giving it 100%, we have that association ingrained into our subconscious. And hey, why brag about the Celsius scale? Don't lie, I know you do it if you're only going to practically use one-third of it in your daily lives. I mean, unless you're, like, actually a person who measures the water as you heat it. You know, instead of just waiting for it to boil, like a normal human being. But at the end of the day, that's just my opinion, and I'd love to hear yours. Are you on Team Celsius or Fahrenheit? You know what? If you feel like it, tweet those at me with those hashtags or just leave it down below, along with any reason why. 
Also, apologies if my voice sounds raspy, especially towards the end of this video. My throat is very sore and I think I might be coming down with something. That's also why this video has taken a while to come out. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, like the video, subscribe for more lessons from the notepad, and I will see you guys next week.